Hello and welcome to this Dr. Ross Maths video on Key Stage 5 Laws of Thirds. Now the first skill that's very important for you to be proficient with is to simplify a third. It's a bit like how we simplify fractions. So we had say 3 over 6, we know we can divide top and bottom by 3 to get 1 over 2. Now similarly with thirds, we want to make sure that the number under the third is as small as possible. To, just like with fractions, we want the top and bottom to be as small as possible. So, if we have say root 50, what we try to do is we try to find two numbers that times to give 50. So, for example, 5 and 10 times to give 50. So we could write this as root 5, root 10. But we ideally just want to have one third left in the expression. So what we do is we look for the biggest square number that's a factor of 50. Now think of your square numbers. What's a factor of 50? Well, 25 is a square number that's a factor of 50. So we write as root 25 and 25 times what is 50? Well, it's 2. And remember, if we times two thirds together, we'd end up times in these numbers. So root 25 times root 2 is root 25 times 2, which is root 50. And then, because the square root of 25 is just 5, it becomes 5 root 2. What about the second one? 3 root 48. Again, we look for the biggest square number that goes into 48. Well, 16 is a square factor of 48. So we can write it as 3, leave the 3 there, root 16. And 16 times what is 48? Well, it's 3. And then we can simplify this because the square root of 16 is 4 and 3 times 4 is 12. So it's 12 root 3. In general with thirds, when you multiply two third expressions like this together, we can times together the thirds together to simplify. So like root 2 times root 3 is root 6. And the non-thirds can also multiply. So the 3 times the 4 combine to make the 12, but that can't combine with the root 3 because that's not a third and that is a third. What about 2? So we've got root 27 plus root 75. So we first simplify each of these. What's the biggest square factor that goes into 27? It's 9. And root 9 times root what is 20, root 27? 9 times 3 is 27. And then the biggest square factor of 75 is 25, so it's root 25, root 3. Now the square root of 9 is 3, so it's 3 root 3, and the square root of 25 is 5. Now if we have 3 lots of root 3, and we add 5 lots of root 3, we have 8 lots of root 3. It's a bit like if I had 3x plus 5x, then we would know that, that would be 8x. But we're just replacing x with root 3 here. What about b? We've got 6 root 8 plus 2 root 18. Do the same thing. Now root 8, biggest square factor of 8 is 4, so it's 6 root 4 root 2. And then root 18 is root 9 root 2. 6 times the square root of 4 is 6 times 2, so it's 2 root 2. And 2 times the square root of 9, 2 times 3 is 6. If we have 2 lots of root 2 and we add 6 lots of root 2, we have 8 lots of root 2. Next, some times in questions. So we've got 4 root 2 times root 3. Now, as I was saying earlier, we can multiply the thirds together, so that becomes root 6, but the non third has to stay as it is. So we've got 4 and then root 6. What about b? We've got root 6 times 5 root 6. Well, again, we can times the thirds together. Root 6 times root 6 is root 36, and the square root of 36 is just 6. So if you times the third by itself, it just gets rid of the square root. So we've got 6 times the 5 is just 30. Then c, 3 root 5 squared. We could just write that out as 3 root 5 times itself. So it's 3 root 5 times by 3 root 5. Now, the root 5 times the root 5 is 5. And 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times 5 is 45. So it just simplifies to 45. And then finally D, 2 root 7 cubed. Again, we could write it out, but this time 3 times, because it's cubed. Now, root 7 times root 7 is 7, times by another root 7 is just 7 root 7. And then we've got the 2 times the 2 times the 2, which is 8, so I've simplified it a bit. And then 8 times 7 root 7 is 56 root 7. What about these ones here? We've got some brackets to expand. So root 3 plus 1 times root 3 minus 2. Now with expanding brackets, we know we times each thing in the first bracket by each thing in the second. So root 3 times root 3 is root 9, which is just 
3. I'm just going to put root 9 for the moment. We'll simplify it later. Root 3 times minus 2 is minus 2 root 3. 1 times root 3 is plus root 3. And 1 times minus 2 is minus 2. Now, let's just simplify the bits of it. That's 3 minus 2 root 3 plus root 3 minus 2. And then we can collect Surdy expressions. So these root 3 terms, we've got minus 2 lots of root 3 plus 1 lot of root 3. Minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. So we have minus 1 lot of root 3. And then the 3 minus 2 is 1. And I probably prefer to write it like this, so 1 minus root 3, because we like to start with the positive term first. And then b, root 8 plus 5 times 2 minus root 2. Now root 8 times 2 is 2 root 8. We'll simplify that later because root 8 can be simplified. Got root 8 times minus root 2. Well it's negative for start because positive times negative is negative. And then root 8 times root 2 is root 16. We'll simplify it later. Then we've got the 5 times the 2. And then we've got the 5 times the minus root 2 is minus 5 root 2. Now let's concentrate on simplifying these terms next. So root 8 is root 4 root 2. Six, root 16 is just 4. And then just copy the rest. 2 times root 4 is 2 times 2. That's 4 root 2. Minus the 5 root 2 is minus 1 lot of root 2. And then minus 4 plus 10 is plus 6. Again, we could write this as 6 minus root 2 to make it a bit tidier. Now moving on to rationalising the denominator. And what I mean by that is to make the denominator of a fraction rational. Because thirds, roots, are irrational. And that means, by the way, that you can't express them as a fraction involving integers. Now we don't like to have root fifth of something. We'd rather the, the third be in the numerator. So we rationalise the denominator by somehow getting rid of this third in the denominator without changing the overall value. And the reason we do it is because it allows us to collect like terms uh, more easily. And we'll see that with b as we get to that. Because at the moment, even if we simplify that root 27 to 3 root 3, which it is, because that root 3 is in the denominator, whereas there's no fraction here, it's not easy to collect those together. But once we rationalise the denominator, we'll have something lots of root 3 minus something lots of root 3. And then that makes it much easier to collect those like terms. So that's why we do it. So this first one, we've got 15 over root 5. Now the strategy here is, well, think with fractions. We can times top and bottom by something without affecting the overall value, as long as it's the same thing we times by. Now what can we times the root 5 by so it's no longer third? Well, we can times it by root 5. So if we do that, then the top is now 15 root 5. And the bottom root 5 times root 5 is 5. And then, remember, we can sort of either times or divide non thirds together. So 15 divided by 5 is just 3. So we have 3 lots of root 5. So that's the final answer. What about b? 15 over root 3 minus root 27. Now let's rationalise this. So times top and bottom by root 3. So 15 root 3 times the bottom by root 3. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. And let's simplify this, that's root 9 root 3. Now the 15 divided by the 3 is 5, so we've got 5 lots of root 3 minus 3 lots of root 3, and that's 2 lots of root 3. What about C? We've got root 3 minus 1 over root 3 plus 1. Now this is a bit harder because we've got multiple things in the denominator. Timesing by root 3 is not going to help here. And what you do is you multiply the bottom by the same expression, but you replace the plus in the middle with a minus, or if it was a minus, you replace it with a plus. So you switch the sign in the middle. So let me just put that in brackets first, and then we're going to times top and bottom by root 3 minus 1. And we call that, by the way, the conjugate. So this is the conjugate of that, because it's the same expression, except for the plus is replaced with a minus or minus with a plus. So we times the bottom by root 3 minus 1, so we have to times the top by root 3 minus 1 as well. And then let's just expand this out. Root 3 times root 3 is 3. Then we've got minus root 3 minus another lot of root 3. That's minus 2 root 3. And then minus 1 times minus 1 is plus 1. Now let's see what happens here. We've got root 3 times root 3 is 3. We've got plus root 3, but also minus root 3. So they cancel, and then we've also got 1 times minus 1, which is minus 1. So we can see there's no third left here, because that positive root 3 cancelled out with the minus root 3. 
The reason why it works, by the way, is if I was to write this as a plus b times a minus b, when you expand that out, you get a squared minus b squared, because look, this is the difference of two squares. That's how you'd factorize it. So can you see that both the first and the second term are going to get squared? So any third that was here is going to get squared and will no longer be a third. So if we just finish this off, that's just 4 minus 2 root 3 over 2. And that simplifies further because each of these can be divided by 2. So we've got 4 over 2 is 2. And 2 root 3 over 2 is 1 root 3, so it's just minus root 3. What about D? Again, we do the same thing. We're going to times top and bottom. I'm going to put that in brackets first. By root 12 plus root 8. So we're multiplying by the conjugate. So we times the top also by root 12 plus root 8. The same thing. A common mistake that students make is they times the top by root 12 minus root 8. Whatever you times the bottom by, you have to also times the top by the same thing. So the top is then just 2 times root 12, 2 root 12. And then 2 times root 8, which is plus 2 root 8. And then the bottom... Now, the quick way of doing this, by the way, we could just expand out each of these things individually. But can we see from this that when we expand a plus b times a minus b, we just get the first thing squared minus the second thing squared. So if we do that here, the first thing squared is 12 minus the second thing squared is 8. And that saves you a lot of time. So if we just simplify this. Now, root 12 is root 4 root 3. And that is root 4 root 2 all over 4. So that is 2 times root 4, it's 2 times 2, so it's 4 root 3, plus that's 2 times root 4, is 4 root 2, all over 4. Now that divide by 4 is just root 3, and that divide by 4 is just root 2. So we just end up with that. And the final question, a kind of applied one, a rectangle has area 6 and width 2 plus root 7, determine its height. Well, we know that the area of a rectangle is just width times height. So if we know the area and we know the width, to find the height, we just do the area divided by the width. So we therefore want to do 6 over 2 plus root 7. And we're going to apply this usual technique. So we multiply top and bottom, putting that in brackets first, by 2 minus root 7. So the top just becomes 12 minus 6 root 7. And if I apply my little trick to the bottom, it's the first thing squared minus the second thing squared, so that's 4, minus root 7 squared is 7. So we get 12 minus 6 root 7 over minus 3. Now, 12 divided by minus 3 is minus 4, and minus 6 root 7 divided by minus 3 is plus 2 root 7. And let's write that in a nicer way of 2 root 7 minus 4, which I would hope is positive, because otherwise we've got an impossible rectangle.